Hello there, I'm Sarfancy and welcome in this Unreal VR tutorial where I will show you how to set different settings for all these weapons, how to stab someone, how to get your weapon light through him and also how to set up light torch and turn it off and on with a press of the button. It's all part of VR tutorial series from beginner to advanced, so I would recommend you to watch previous video. We are also using VR expansion plugin, so if you don't have it installed and don't know how to, I have a video for that as well, or just click on the link in the description. Well, first of all, let's look at how these all weapons are set up. So, if you just open it, you can see it's some kind of asset, it has weird collision box, what the hell are they supposed to be for, we will go through all that. Let's look at this sphere. If you edit it, I try to look into that blueprint, first thing you can see that that is almost no code. The thing is that these weapons are made as child actors of some base weapon, which is pretty good for us because it will be easier to modulate it for us. If you click right here on the left up corner, you can see that it's all based on meal base. So click on this little icon and find meal base. And now we have a regular blueprint with all and everything set up. If you want to reprogram that weapon or just make some changes, you need to create a copy of this meal base and edit it here. You won't actually do anything here. So let's see what different settings we have here. Well, we will actually play all this time with uh, daggers. So first of all, let's move this shield and look at this dagger. Uh, I, am, I have here a detail panel and I will move it right here so you can see it properly. And if I now scroll down, you can see that in each of these weapon blueprint instances, we can edit few more settings. So let's let's click on this VR grip interface and open VR grip interface setting. And you can see there is a lot of stuff we can play with. For example, let's try to set one on deny gripping. You can pretty much guess what it will do. Basically, you won't be able to pick it up. That can be pretty useful if you want to have weapon somewhere and player not to be able to pick it up unless something happens, then you can use this. And you can also allow multiple grips. Let's see what it does if we enable it on this one and let it disable it on that one. It's probably pretty straightforward. Now, in one hand, I have one that has only one grip. So if I try to pick it with other hand, it will skip to it. But if I do it with this one, let's pick it up and you can see that other hand just clench to it. And you can see that other hand just click to it and I can hold it with both hands like stop someone or whatever you would want to do with dagger. You can also disable simulate on drop. Uh, it simply will not drop the weapon down and simulate physics once you let it go with your hand. Let's click on advanced grip setting and the pretty important can be also grip priority. For example, if you have two weapons that are overlapping each other, let's move this mace. So right now it would be kinda hard to pick up only one of them. And let's say that you want always to pick up first dagger. So let's click on dagger, go to grip priority and set it to three. And then if you take mace, let's set it to, let's leave it on one. That simply means every time it has an option to choose which of these it should take, it will take the one with higher priority, which means dagger. Now I can drop this down and take this one. Oh, come on, come here, mate. Wonderful. Now let's actually look into this sphere. If you click on it, oh, come on, open edit sphere. And we want to look into grip line, which is this green line, which you can see right here. It pretty much just covers the space of the object that you can grip. So if we just click on scale, make sure it's unlocked and we want to scale X axis only to 0.2. Now if I move it here, that means every time I will try to grip it, it will only go to this little area. Let's see. Previously you could have gripped it anywhere on this stick. Now if I try it, you can see that the only I can do is actually this part if I try it here it will automatically switch there and now something you are probably waiting for all this time how to stab someone click on the ticker and in search detail let's find penetration and no I don't want to know what we are thinking about penetration and we will look into weapon setting right here component name is set to stubber which is this little blueprint uh, let this little collision that we have here and what we will set up is penetration depth that basically means how deep you can stab your weapon into someone once you will begin the process of actually stabbing someone it's still family friendly content keep calm it's tutorial <laughs> And the most important thing here is penetration velocity. Pretty much how fast you need to move your hand to penetrate through. So let's take this copy and set it 
to only like 200 you can't really set it to set it to that low but we will try it for this time and this time and for this one let's leave it on 4000 4, and let's actually use also a sword just to demonstrate it and we will have two of them penetration velocity here will be just 400 so we can see it copy it and oh, come on make a copy and with the other copy we want to set penetration depth not to 50 but to 150 which basically can go almost through with that but we will see all that so in the right hand i have dagger with lower threshold of velocity and in the left hand with much higher and with the right one if i just slowly move it there it will go right through stay there sounds cool and looks cool which is much more important and if i, tr if I try it with this one you can see that i need to push much more to go through it that's that's penetration threshold for you all right it didn't really work with the sword and that's simply because we have set it here only penetrate with two hands that's pretty useful as well which means you can penetrate someone only if you hold it with two or with both of your hands so i will disable it right now so we can see how in deep he can we can stab that guy all right so now let's try first one stab him through and you can see that that's the one with much more depth enabled you can go pretty much through it it's Oh, it's completely there, oh, hilt is there, everything is there. <laughs> and if I stop him with this one, it will, as you can see, stay like this. Cool. If you want to just change mesh of your weapon, I won't actually show you how to do it, because it's super simple. You just need to have mesh and switch it right here in the viewport. Just click here and choose different mesh, that's really super simple, let's do X or whatever. Important is that that mesh must be rotated in the same way as all the others are, which means heading like this, you cannot have it headed like this or whatever you have it like, because it kinda messes it all up. If you will have it rotated correctly and scaled it to 1.0, everything should be fine. Let's get to that interesting part I wanted to talk about, and that's how to set up torch with a press on and off button. So we have a torch mesh, link in the description if you want, and what we will need to do is to click right here and look at our old editor BP pickup cube. It's a little bit redone, so we can do much more stuff with it right here. And what we will do is to right click on it and browse to asset, which will find it for us. We will right click on it, duplicate and call it torch. Or light torch, all up to you. And put it in AA files. Now double click on that. And if we click on static mesh component, what you need to do is to right click on it and put here name of your torch. Default scale is set to 002, which we definitely don't want and I'm afraid even now it will be a bit too small so let's maybe do like 0 0.5 uh, 1.5 usually it's much better to not scale it here and have it in one in 1.0 scale from the modeling package and that's simply because it can have some bugs with physics we will see that later hopefully we won't see that but it can happen Usually if you have problem with physics, it really jumps or something. Probably you don't have scale uniform, which means set it to 1, 1, 1. Or you don't have it center in 0, 0, 0 coordinates, which means its origin is somewhere else. Look into that if you have weird bugs. Now we will put it right here and it seems, scale seems pretty cool. Hopefully it won't bug. And we will double click on torch and add here light. We will add a dynamic light, which generally is not best idea for VR game, but we can probably afford one or two at the scene and it's pretty hard to make torch without it so let's put a light spotlight rotate it a bit let's increase intensity just for the sake of it and set color to i don't know red so we can easily see it compile and if we put it in the game you can see it's lighting, it's light, wherever it needs to be lit. <laughs> okay, that was kind of cringe. Let's go back into for into this blueprint and we will set it up somehow. Well, how we will do it is using one of these super methods of this plugin. And that's simple. Oh, actually, that light needs to be higher and a little bit more forward. All right, now we can do it. We will add component and we will simply put here add VR button. And let's make sure that it's not under spotlight, but it's under static mesh component. Not that it really matters. Static mesh set simply to button. 
but you can use button we will use button top but you can use whatever you want scale it all down 0. Point. okay let's first of all lock it and then set it to 0. 0.1 we will rotate it and put it on the back of this torch it will look kind of weird with this big red button like we are gonna start a war or something but we will manage all right let's do 0. 0.5 on scale you can also set up VR button for anything like this. Definitely recommend you to explore this more. We will now scroll down here and click on on button state change, which means basically it was either turned on or off. After that, we will put here flip flop and on A, we will set intensity of this spotlight to zero, which means we will turn it off and after b we will set it back to original value which was i believe 550 000. let's just copy it don't need to worry about that paste it here compile and let's see if it works all right you can see that it works with your hand just nice grip seems pretty cool well as long as you really hold it and let's try to turn it off you need to touch it and look at that oh that's that's really cool i'm so i'm really excited because to program a simple button is actually pretty hard in default vr engine but with this plugin it's incredibly insane it will react to this little collision that you have in hand so let's touch it again and let's look at that it works on works off Alrighty, that was everything for this tutorial i hope that it was helpful for you if it was press the like button consider subscribing i suppose and that's about it so fancy out